mean, on this album, I mean, to me, the like the production is, you know, like really, really sticks out. And I was wondering, like, how has how has Hippocampus, like, how have you changed as a band in terms of production? You know, like where have like where you started and where you are now, like how do you do things differently? I think it is that we have had a taste of a specific type of process and from the last two records and we were like hmm not for us let's make it a little more at home and we brought in our friend Caleb who is very much an at home kind of vibe and he's been super close if not best friends with us for almost 10 years um yeah and I think because of him being at the helm, like it allowed us to be able to feel that much more comfortable saying and speaking up and, and being a part of the process. And we yeah. literally did it all, just the five of us in Minnesota with our own money and gear. And, you know, like we didn't go anywhere to try and experience what it is to record somewhere special and um, basically just took the resources that we were provided with and just like just funneled them straight into our home setup and system. And I think that probably is the biggest reason why the production is so different from the last stuff. Yeah, there was, there's not really like a, there wasn't like a really heavy like industry machine breathing down our, our necks, like trying to get us to work with, um, you know, some, super experienced producer or anything like that you know we we're just like let's just do this shit ourselves that's kind of the ethos of the band any anyway and yeah we could dive into that too yes yeah. but i mean that's been our goal for years yeah. i think is to always kind of have it be as diy as possible in-house um what was that you would say like we got a taste of it and did not like that what was that the last two records we worked with bj burton on and i think there was like a lot of inner band relational problems that were going on and um just growing up too i think um they were re really pressurized uh recording and production processes processes mm -hmm. and um it was just a tumultuous time especially having been touring for such a like long time and like without really getting a, a chance to take a breath um we're struggling to keep up and and so the the production of the last two records um as as much as we love those albums like they represent a uh bit of a, a darker time for us as individuals and as a group <laughs> yeah i think sure. they were they're a good example of an attempt for us to figure out what where we want to do yeah and this was this process for lp3 was like we're doing it oh this is like actually kind of what that feels like um and the next one will be that much more you know so um what what, what did you do that felt like that well like what did you do differently that you were like this is it this is that thing just the setup i think yeah alone like, yeah. like just just having it under the um just the environment itself i think like having caleb there just our friend yeah. working on it on our own like um you know it was like the early days of the band where we were making music that we enjoyed first and there wasn't a lot of like um like lofty or maybe you know too big for our britches feeling it was really like a comfortable environment to work in and i think that that's kind of like why the the process itself was was so enjoyable and, and fruitful for us yeah um well we are playing ride or die right now i would like to do like a bit of like an anatomy of that song how did that song start or where did it start yeah yeah that's a great example of a song that is like the uh the closest to how we started as a band um where like somebody has a riff which i think it was jake had some sort of progression or riff and we just went into a room and jammed on it hashed it out and then the recording the difference then or the difference now then in the past is 
we didn't use computer we didn't know how to like do all that stuff so we were in the studio while we did this and it was we were able to like immediately start kind of plopping it into pro tools and into the DAW and like really starting to see what we do with it um yeah it was from the ground up it was yeah. a very organic process and um that, that song I think for all of us represents the the sort of um uh brotherhood or or the band itself everybody contributing and everybody being a part of it and and just feeling uh you know like these are my ride or dies yeah I think it aids to like everything you just described is like what aids to it having that feeling that it has when you're listening to it and, and um you know to each to each their own in terms of how they enjoy it or don't enjoy it but um I hate that <laughs> I think that the the fact that we were able to create that one with such ease and and love and peace um is what people are able to hear and experience totally um uh, there uh, to me there there seems to be like a lot of uh musical imprints on this album and uh, i i think right away like i don't know if i'm just like conflating like you guys are in Minnesota and uh, there, I, I definitely feel like there is like, um, there's like a, there's a, a Bon Iver like influence on the, on the album. Is that out of place or, or do you think no, that is like, it's surprising to hear because we never really get that. Well, but, yeah, yeah. But it makes sense. It's in, it's because of BJ's influence on us, I think as, as producers, like True. just BJ having worked so closely with Justin over how many fucking years or yeah. can i swear i'm sorry i'm not allowed to swear yeah. no 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 that's fine i can I, um, I will edit later i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> uh, <all> good. <laughs> so yeah i think that that yeah and, and the you know the eau claire community and and the twin cities are closely linked um in terms of clientele and so yeah i think that the the midwest um is often associated with that kind of sound and and everything that um those in incredible musicians and producers uh work on so yeah i mean we all have listened to his music forever yeah you know it's, it's a caleb was one of the first people for me to like push it into my life and so i do you know yeah it's just interesting it's not something we like ever show up and go oh yeah yeah just like justin you know like let's try it you know it's never yeah. really talked about but it totally makes sense do you like do you show up and are like i want to do a song that sounds like this does that no <laughs> i think i think it's as we um create something we start to go like that kind of sounds like or this kind of sounds like this blah 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 like should we steer clear should we not should yeah. we dive into that should we not you know like, a lot of it's from the hip yeah but i think later on as the song develops we we kind of like you can analyze it more yeah it's more of a thing explore production and and kind of freak it out a little <laughs> um uh, well i would like to talk i would like to have each of you talk about somebody else's song too um and one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to do is to know like what is the last song that you couldn't stop listening to because i would love to like come out of this by um like having this conversation and playing you know some songs from lp3 and then play a song that each of you pick and to know what that is absolutely i'm just gonna uh, yeah. go look into yeah. my thing because i need it oh man um we're talking about like on repeat kind of song yeah i mean it's and it can be it can be anything it's just to like to not i don't want to have the pressure of like what's your like favorite song of all time or something like that and i always feel like there's a song like recently i think for like people that listen to music that you're like wow i listened to this one in the past month and i this is my song yeah 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 I'm trying to see if i if spotify literally okay. uh, <laughs> the dude there's like so many actually <laughs> um i don't know yeah if... it's like almost every song is like <laughs> okay no, there's... Uh, i've got one it. each I've got, though I've got... yeah one each okay go ahead whistler um i really fell in love with i miss that by porches off this new record and mm. i this fall was like just i could listen to it like 
10 times in a row. It was something that, do you want me to like describe why or, or yes, something? Yes, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, I would love to know. Um, there, I've, I've never been like a massive fan of his stuff, but this new record specifically like really struck something in me. Um, and it is something that like I've always like, I don't know, there was something about the sound with his vocal production, which he's always kind of done, but like the new drum sounds and like, it didn't feel, it felt like a little more poppy and like a little more short song driven as opposed to these like really elaborate synth heavy, like dance tunes kind of, even yeah. though these are all very dancey still. Um, but that song, it, there's something in me that likes repetitive lyrical mel like melodies and, and stuff that's like simple and straightforward that are catchy and that one, he like just really hit the nail on the head for me. Um, I think it just is, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had that experience in a long time where I was like completely consumed by that first couple of songs that he dropped. I this, love that. Yeah. And why did you like, sometimes it's like, why did you press play on that? You know, like why, uh, like of all the music yeah. you give a try, why did you give that one a try? Uh, the, this band that I was working with called Ivers was, one of them is like a really big Porches fan. And I think we were maybe just spending some time in the studio, like sharing songs or something. And he mentioned it or like showed me the music video for it or something. It was just some random kind of like, oh, have you seen this new thing? And then I watched it and I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. And then I just like, binged it. I binged it for almost, I could still, I stopped binging it probably in like December, but yeah, dear. I listen to that all the time. Great. Love that. All right. Okay. My song of the day is I See You Baby by Groove Armada. It's in an episode of The Sopranos. And okay. there's there's just a there's there's some there's some breasts flailing about. And it was just it's such it is so such a so it's so good. Just check it out, guys. Groove Armada, I see you, baby. It's one of a kind, really. Total jam. We will do it. All right. Can we lost you for a second? Are we back? Okay. Yeah, we lost you for a second too. But we are yeah. right at the end here. So that is like that's it. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah so thank you uh thanks for lp3 and um i hope to see you soon i mean you guys are close you always you know stop through milwaukee at some point on the way either to or from home so yeah yeah we we can't we can't you don't know we just show up we just show up all right are we? maybe we're not we'll figure it out but uh we'll perhaps yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Go. Uh, well, good luck uh, practicing and on tour. And thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you, man. Talk to you yeah. later. You too.